Nick Collection was just updated. Nick Collection is a software collection from DxO. Let's look how that collection can help you to get better photographs or make your existing photographs better. And we have to start with the disclaimer. This video is based on 6.3 Nick Collection beta version. So the final version might be slightly different, but most likely it will be quite similar. So no big changes that will affect the user interface, for example. There might be something under the hood. Uh, DxO provided me the beta version and I was able to use it for about a week before I made this video. And it's the new version has been launched at the moment I published this video. DxO did not tell me what to say in this video, nor did they even tell me to do something. They just provided me the beta version for testing and, and I decided to make a video because I think it's something that might benefit you to, to learn about the Nick collection. And the beta version will expire in, in a few days after the launch of the, the final version. But let's uh, first talk what Nick collection actually is. It is a set of eight different software, each dedicated to a different tasks. They work as standalone and plugins for Photoshop, Lightroom Classic, DxO, Photolab 6 and Affinity Photo. And I believe they work also as a plugin for earlier versions of Photolab, but I'm not totally sure about that. That wasn't listed on the stuff that I got from DxO, but I assume that it will. The eight software are Analog FX, Color FX, Define, HDR FX, Perspective, Sharpener, Silver FX, and Vivisa. And I will discuss briefly about all of these different softwares and, and you know, show a bit of them, how they look and how, how to use them and why to use that particular software, how it works. In Photoshop, you have this small window where you can press and it will open the uh, image that is active on Photoshop. Is that the way to say it? But anyways, the, the image that you have open in Photoshop, just, just click the, the tool that you want and it will open the image in, in its own window. And then you can do some adjustments, which I will get back to a bit later. Then in Lightroom Classic, you press the right button on your mouse over an image and then you choose it from the list. And it will do the same thing. It will first make a TIFF file and then it will open that and it will stack the image to the original image in Lightroom. So, and after you've done your editing, it will take you back to Photoshop or Lightroom. And as I said, it works also a plugin for different other softwares like Affinity, Photolab 6. And now let's look what the tools are. We'll start with analog effects. With this, you can get different uh, vintage looks. On the left side, you have the basic tools and presets for different looks. There are a lot of them. In camera kit, there are light leaks, film types, dirt and scratches. Then there are different cameras. The possibilities are endless. All are good if used wisely, but with this, you can overdo it and kind of ruin your image. So avoid that. And then we have silver effects. And that's the tool to make black and white images. And DXS says that these tools are inspired by the real tools in Darkroom. There are both global adjustments and local adjustments. Global adjustment affect the whole image and local only the part you have chosen or masked. Making local adjustment is easy. Just click this and use the sliders inside the circle. Of course, you can have several control points to make local adjustments in different places of the image or different areas of your image. I think this is a very cool way of making black and white images. And this is one of those tools that I might be using if I decide to purchase this software because Making black and white images is a lot of fun and you can do them in Photoshop and Lightroom, but I found that these plugins do it a little, little, little better. And there is also another tool for black and white image making from DxO that's called Film Pack. And I think it's on version six now. So there might be some overlapping. So if you already have Film Pack six, you might consider and maybe not getting this, but there are some additional tools like the very good local adjustments that you can do or, or the easy way you can do in, in silver effects. So yeah, it could be something if you do a lot of black and white images. And then what is your favorite way of making black and white images? Do you use monochrome in camera and get, you know, black and white from there? Or what software do you use when you convert your images to black and white? Or do you photograph black and white at all? 
please let us know in the comments down below. Then there is color effects. This is for, obviously, color images. It works the same way. On the left are the tools and presets, on the right are the adjustments. You can make the adjustments as presets so you can come back. If you find a good recipe for your images, then you can come back and make it a preset or come back to that preset that you have stored already. Yeah, that's the better way to say it. And that also works in most Nick collection software that you can, you know, save your adju adjustments as presets. And here again, the possibility is endless. And it can be a bit overwhelming because there are so many different things that you can adjust and make different types of looks. So be careful not to overdo it. But of course, play around with the sliders and see what they do and find your own way. That is kind of like your style. That's that's the best way to do it because otherwise it's, it's just overwhelming. You, you just adjust this and that and make a mess. And then there is Nick Define. That is for noise reduction. And uh, not really sure why they have this here, probably because it was there before. And uh, to be honest, it works quite well. It gives, at least for this image, quite natural looking image. It doesn't make it too plasticky. And uh, this is something that I might use in the future. At least I will learn a bit more how it works and, and compare it with, with other uh, noise reduction software. And here again, DxO has some alternatives to this. For example, DxO Pure Raw, uh, which is on third version already. And then, of course, in Photolab 6, the, the same algorithm as DxO Pure Raw works in, in that software too. So if you already have those, I don't know if you need to define, but it is something to, to explore and because they all make slightly different looking images. And then we have Nick Sharpener, which is another tool that is very useful if you are, for example, doing printing, because it has all kinds of uh, algorithms for different printers, different papers, so that you can choose them and get the perfect uh, sharpening for that particular type of printing. And that's, that's a huge thing if you're doing a lot of printing. And it also has a pre-sharpener and output sharpener. So first you do the, uh, uh, the um, pre-sharpener and then you edit the image and then depends on your output you choose the output sharpener and this this tool alone could be worth if you're doing a lot of printing for me i don't do printing so it's not that big of a thing but the pre-sharpener is quite good then there is nick perspective which corrects perspective and lens distortions again here dxo has some other tools that can do that too but there's one little thing in this tool that was really useful or is really useful. That's the wide angle stretch fix. Usually when you're taking images with really uh, like ultra wide angle lenses, you have this kind of like a stretch at the corners of the image or the, at the edges. And this tool can fix that, make it more natural, it crops the image slightly and, and fixes the and makes the shape that is in a corner more natural looking and this is very good especially for uh, group shots and stuff where you might have some people on the on the edges of the frame and, and they get a bit distorted or if you have some faces on the on the, the corners of the image with very ultra or uh, ultra wide angle lens then this tool can be really handy so if you are using a lot of ultra wide angle lenses you might want to check out this tool it works really well and, and this is the third thing that I might use in the future because it works really well. The perspective tool, yes, it's totally fine. It works okay, but there are other tools that can do the same job that I already have. So that part is not that interesting to me. As I said, the wide angle stretch fix is, is a good tool. Then we have Nick HDR effects, which is, yeah, makes HDR images out of your images. I didn't find this to be that good. I already have pretty good tools to make uh, HDR images if I need. I can make them in camera quite well and also Lightroom does it does a really good job so I don't really need this. And if you don't have any way of making HDR images then this might be useful for you. What HDR is is actually combining different exposures of the same subject to make the image to have more dynamic range. So HDR using used wisely is not a bad thing to do in, edi in photo editing. And then there is uh, Nick Viveza, which is, you know, kind of like a more general editing software that, that can do 
all kinds of things. And to be honest, I didn't take a that deep look into this, but it works very well in the same way as other Nick collection software that you have this uh, global adjustments and then you have this uh, local adjustments that you can you can use the, the sliders inside the circle. And this is very good if you want to have a certain area that you want to uh, adjust. And to be honest, I don't really need this because uh, in Lightroom I can use masks to do the same stuff. It, it works a bit differently, but I'm so used to using Lightroom Classic so that this tool is not the one that I would like to use. But if you don't have any proper image editing software yet, this is something to look for. And it's not bad. I'm not saying that, that that's not why I'm using I'm not so used to the, the user interface and the way it works. Do I recommend the whole software or the collection? Yes and no. If you don't have anything or you want to very good black and white images with silver effects or analog effects, then yes, it's worth testing and, and, and exploring is, if that is something for you. For me, the as I already mentioned, the wide angle stretch tool or the stretch fix is really useful. And then, of course, the black and white conversion with silver effects is, is quite good and maybe sometimes use the analog effects. But especially the silver effects is something that I might get this uh, collection for. It depends. Haven't decided yet. And the prices are not that bad here. You can see the prices for different um, currencies. And also if you already have the upgrade is 79 and the as new and you don't have it yet is 149. So it's not a bad investment if you if you really need the certain things. And yeah, you got eight different softwares, which of course is uh, not the most convenient to use if you want to use several of them. You It's a bit of a hassle, but uh, if you only need, for example, converting to black and white and want some really good options and adjustments, then yes, it works quite well. So so what do you think? Have you ever used it? It's been a long time on the market, Nick Collection, I mean. It was a, a standalone software company first and then Google bought it and then Google killed it and then there was a petition and DxO bought it or started it again and now we are in 6.3. So what do you think? Is that something for you? And if it is, there's a link in the description to get it. It's an affiliate link, so I get a little commission if you use that link and buy the software. But of course, you don't pay any extra, so it's a win-win situation. You get a good software and you support my free content on YouTube. And here are some more videos about DxO that I've made or DxO software that I made. You might want to look those if you're interested in other opportunities that DxO offers. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.